Well, the dysfunction in Jacksonville continues both on and off the field. Before the shutout loss to the Titans, a report came out that head coach Urban Meyer got into a screaming match with receiver Marvin Jones and that he called his assistant coaches losers. Losers. Yeah. But Myers addressed the media after the 20-0 shutout and denied all claims. Take a listen here. Calling someone a loser, that's inaccurate. I have high expectations for our coaches. I uh, very demanding of our coaches, um, and expect guys to be held accountable for their positions. And at times uh, when they're not, those are we address it. Uh, but I assure you, there is not whatever report. Amy told me something about that. That's nonsense. What's the answer? Uh, start leaking information or some nonsense? No, no, that's nonsense. That's garbage that's uh, you know that's once again I've been very blessed I've not really dealt with that I've, I've not dealt with well did you hear what he said what no let's improve on offense and get our quarterback in a position to be successful that's our focus what someone's brother said or someone said someone said that will that will occupy very little of my time and if if there is a source that source is unemployed I mean within seconds Urban Meyer not happy there. Let's welcome in our Jason Luck and for our JLC. You seem to have your beat on the pulse of the dysfunction going on in Jacksonville. What are you hearing to be the truth? Well, I mean, look, he's been degrading and deriding his coaches in front of players since the summer. I chronicled it before the season began. Um, it's been an ongoing problem. As to whether or not he specifically called them losers, I can tell you he got in front of a staff meeting and said, I'm a winner. You can check my, my resume. I'm a champion. I'm a champion. What have you ever won? What have you guys won? Go around the room and tell me what you've won. So, I mean, we could pick nits as to whether he specifically called people losers or not. But frankly, he's done much worse than that out on the playing fields um, and in individual meetings. And, and just his overall, the way he comports himself with players and coaches is utterly distasteful. And it's been an issue in that building since the very early days of his regime. Uh, he's lost whatever lingering trust and respect he had with some players and coaches. The GM, Trent Balke, is now distancing himself from Urban Meyer as well. Um, I think if you gave Balke a truth serum, he'd say Charlie Strong should take over this football team. Former longtime college head coach and assistant head coach slash linebackers coach with that team right now. Um, he's seen as the anti-Urban Meyer and someone who players and coaches could rally around, at least as a human being, if nothing else. Um, Meyer's been caught repeatedly in lies, lying to players, lying to coaches, lying about why James Robinson was benched a week ago. Um, it's, it's, it's completely broken. And whether or not Shad Khan gets around to doing something this week or maybe next week should they lose again to Houston remains to be seen. But I can tell you the sense I get from players in that locker room is if Urban Meyer's still their head coach at the end of the season, and the, the players are given opportunities to do exit interviews, which is fairly common in the NFL, whether those be with management and or ownership, people will not be holding back about their feelings about Urban Meyer. Um, and Trevor Lawrence went public last week. When that young man's willing to say what he said last week, that's a, that's a cry for help to ownership. We'll see whether Shad Khan reacts. And the Jags have been eliminated from the postseason now 2-11, and 11, so it seems like it is only time there. So clearly the Urban Meyer experiment isn't working out so well, but we have seen college coaches have success at the next level. Now there are rumors swirling around Ohio State's Ryan Day making that jump. What are your thoughts there? Well, I, I can tell you that Day's agent, Trace Armstrong, has had at least uh, one discussion with the Chicago Bears upper management about possibly taking over their football operations. It would be a restructuring of the Bears organization where team president Ted Phillips gets out of football operations where frankly he probably doesn't belong anyway and focuses on building their new stadium um, that they're trying to get constructed down the road in Arlington. Trace Armstrong would bring Ryan Day as the head coach. He would very likely also bring Dwayne Joseph, a longtime personnel guy from the Raiders. Uh, Joseph and Armstrong played together with the Bears. Armstrong has very uh, strong contacts with the Bears. He's very well liked there, very well respected from his playing days. And obviously Justin Fields played for Ryan Day at Ohio State. Whether all this comes to be remains to be seen, but certainly uh, Matt Nagy looks to be on his last legs at, as head coach. Armstrong also represents him. And I know the GM there, Ryan Pace, 
has told people at various times he thought he could be part of a restructured Bears front office moving forward. Uh, I'm not so sure that's going to end up being the case. We always have the inside info because Trace uh, Armstrong, he actually tweeted out that those rumors weren't true. He said, I have the utmost respect for the Chicago Bears organization. However, any assertion that I have engaged in conversations with them about joining the club in any capacity is simply not true. So, JLC, thank you for writing it as always. All right, we're going to move on to the next team needing a coach, and that's the Las Vegas Raiders coming off that 48-9 to beating of the Chiefs. Some logo stomping there. The Raiders are expecting to clean house, it seems. JLC, what's, what are you hearing there? Yeah, I mean, their owner, Mark Davis, has put off his coaching search to this point, waiting to see, you know, how the team would look under interim coach Rick Passaccia. And obviously, he didn't, Davis, expect to be rebooting completely. He was halfway through a 10-year deal with John Gruden. And make no mistake, John Gruden was the emperor there. He had full control over personnel, over the building, over all football matters, over coaching. So when Gruden left, you're looking at the entire front office structure, basically, as being cast into doubt. And at this point, uh, it's just a matter of time before Davis embraces the inevitable and starts a coaching search that's very likely to include a GM search as well. They've they've had um, a terrible run, frankly, with their first-round picks. The talent isn't where it needs to be, considering all the picks they amassed when they dealt Khalil Mack to the Bears. Uh, And obviously yesterday was um, fairly tragic uh, in terms of a – of, of, a, of a footballing display. Um, not very good. Derek Carr not trending in the right direction. The offense nor the defense trending in the right direction. Three turnovers for 21 points in the first half, coupled with seven penalties for 75 yards. You know, th- that's how you're down 30 points at the half. Uh, so, yeah, uh, we'll see what, what Davis does. Does he try to get one coach in there who has all the power like Gruden does? Is it, a little, is it spread around a little more uh, equitably? But either way, changes in the air in Vegas. Yeah, Raiders have lost five of their last six games after starting off the season five and two. JLC, thank you so much for joining us as always. And if you want more from the NFL, you got to look no further than the Pick 6 podcast. Our guys getting you up to speed each day in about 30 minutes. The latest pod filled with week 14 recaps and reactions. you got to listen and subscribe today. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis. No yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.